Twice in one year, I have been to a city that I did not expect to be a retro gaming hotbed, and I am here to tell you, Columbus, Ohio needs to be on your map. If you have never been to the city, trust me, you need to go. I was back in Columbus this past November 5th, visiting Torg Game Expo. Mike and the gang had me out as a special guest, and sincere thank you to them for doing so because it was an absolutely wonderful convention and i gotta be honest with you this has twice now i've been to columbus twice in the past year i've been there once for korg back in may and this time for torg here in november and i gotta be honest with you this is one of the best cities if you are hunting retro games because not only do you have these incredible conventions you also have some great stores and i'll be getting to those in a minute but i am here to talk about torg i hit the road at 5 15 in the morning and that put me on the road to arrive at torg at about 9 30. now the drive to Columbus isn't bad from Kalamazoo, it's really not at all. You just head down 94, you head down 69, and then you're taking back roads from Fort Wayne to get to Columbus, and it's actually a pretty easy drive. It's just four and a half hours at four o'clock in the morning. There was a lot of coffee consumed, folks, let me tell you. <laughs> but I did arrive. I ended up showing up right on time. I met a lovely couple right out in the front. I did not catch your names. I'm so sorry about that. They're from Pittsburgh. They were awesome. They recognized me, which is still weird, but still awesome, and I appreciate it. Uh, and I hope you guys had a wonderful time. The show was so busy, I didn't see you again throughout the day. I hope you guys had a wonderful time at the show. If you're the lovely couple I talked to out in the parking lot, please drop a comment down below. I would love to know who you are and say thank you personally, because it was just an absolute joy to be able to talk to you guys. Hey, we are here at the 2022 Tour Gaming Expo. What do you say we go for a little walk around, huh? But the show was hopping. The The vendor floor was packed. Uh, looking at some of the figures after the fact, I can absolutely believe this. There was about 8,000 people at the show, and that's that's pretty remarkable. Um, for a show that is only in its ninth year and has grown exponentially every year that they've done it, this is a pretty remarkable accomplishment. And there was some spectacular stuff here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I expected to see a lot of the same vendors and a lot of the same merchandise that I saw at Korg back in May, because usually regional things happen. When you go to a show, you're going to see a lot of the same products offered, whether there's a distribution center nearby or something like that. But this time, I did not get what I saw at Korg. Now at Korg, Korg was a very heavy Atari, very heavy Coleco, very early NES, very early Sega Master System, stuff like that. And that was kind of what I expected here, but this had a full swath of stuff. It was, there was a lot of NES for sure, but the majority of stuff I saw at this one was kind of N64, PS2, GameCube, that era. And it was awesome. It was so cool to see. And there was so much amazing stuff to pick up. Now. The convention itself had a lot of stuff going on. There was an awesome youth area where kids were able to go and play and do crafts and stuff like that. And I thought that was just a spectacular touch. Radical Reggie was there. If you guys saw one of my last videos, you know I got to hang out with Reggie and talk to him for the first time. Uh, and people were able to try to change Reggie's mind about a per about their particular gaming opinion and thought that was pretty clever. I thought that was a really, uh, a really fun way to do it. And uh, there was a huge free play area as well, but I think my favorite thing that was at the show, aside from, aside from the vendors and aside from the amazing people, was the Dr. Mario World Championship. I thought that was really neat. Uh, I was hoping my friend Steve was going to be there. Steve, I know, was involved with it, and he was hoping to be there, but Steve wasn't able to make it to the show. Hopefully next year, Steve. Next year, I want to see you at Torg, because i got to hang out with you again, man. I can't wait to see you in Milwaukee, but we got to do Columbus next year. But, of course, the highlight for me, the, the best part of the show, was getting to see my friends, getting to see John, getting to see Brett, uh, and being able to see the stuff that they had to offer and the video game history display that was behind them. It was just a fantastic display running through the entire history of video games like i'm not going to say every console was there but i would say like the vast majority of stuff was on display in this amazing little museum piece that was set up behind where john and brett were set up and it was awesome i i actually left a little bit throughout the middle of the day because it got really crowded and it was a very very packed venue uh, and that's no fault of the show it was just it's a lot of people showing up, and that's not a bad thing when you're running a convention. I actually went to uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets Pro Shop and got to see that. I went out to lunch, went back to the hotel, freshened up a little bit, and then came back at the end of the day. Uh, and I was able to see my friends Katie and Ken, and they're just amazing, darling, wonderful daughter, Iris, uh, who is just a just the, the most magical little kid out there. She's wonderful. I would love to see the world through her eyes because she's just, she's the coolest. And being able to see them was was amazing. Uh, I had a wonderful time. It was a wonderful show. Are there things I would change? Absolutely. There's things I would change about every show, but it's not my show. Uh, I think wider aisles would never be a bad thing, but you know, when you're limited on venue size, you do what you can. And I think the way it was set up was pretty logical and was actually handled pretty well. I don't know that I would have put the main area where they were doing the raffle drawings right 
uh, kind of front and center on that middle aisle. I think it would probably put that off to the side or at least had the line go up to the side because there was a period of time in the middle of the day where the raffle line was set up and it was almost impossible to get through. But uh, again, good problem to have when you're running a convention when people are that interested. Yeah, that's a good problem to have. Now, do I suggest going to Torg? First off, yeah, absolutely. It's a one day show. The price is ridiculously affordable. VIP is worth every penny if you sign up for it. Uh, I can't wait to go back next year. I am I am already planning on going next year. But it wasn't just Torg that I went to when I was in Columbus. I was able to hang out with Reggie and John Hancock and Brett Weiss after the show. And we went to not only White Castle for the first time for John Hancock, we also went to uh, Warp Zone in Hilliard, Ohio. And I met Darren, who was the owner. And Warp Zone is... Warp Zone is pretty much the perfect retro game store. Darren is unbelievably knowledgeable of his product. He has a deep love and affection for games, in particular import games, which I thought was awesome because I'm starting to get more into imports now. And he had such just a deep affection for, for the things that he had. And he was so excited for people to discover games and to see the games that he had that it was infectious. It was an unbelievable store to be in. And if you are in the Columbus, Ohio area, particularly if you're in Hilliard, you need to do yourself a favor and go to Warp Zone because it was honestly one of the best shopping experiences I've ever had. And it has become a must stop event for me next time I'm in Columbus. Uh, I'm actually going back next month to visit Katie and Ken with Meredith and Victor. And uh, yeah, we'll be going to Warp Zone because uh, Darren does an unbelievable job there. And the store is just magnificent. Now, after that, though, the uh, after the show ended, I was going to go over to see Katie and Ken the next day, uh, but unfortunately, I was a bit under the weather. I woke up with a fever and was really not feeling well, so I just headed home, made the trek back, uh, and got home and then crashed for the rest of the day. But we're not here to just talk about what I did in the trip and everything like that, as amazing as it was. We're here to talk about pickups, of course, and you're here to see the things that I picked up at the show, because... It wasn't just a couple of things. No, I got some absolutely fantastic stuff. This is uh, my badge, my VIP badge, which is really cool, featuring Torque Man, one of the mascots for the event. Uh, there's Torque Man, Torque Man, and the Hoarder. Uh, and I just thought that was really cool. The fact that, you know, the marketing that the show did, uh, not only on social media, which was like ever present, like I can't imagine the work level that the team behind Torque did to get as much social media coverage as they did, but. Every single store that I went to had something having to do with Torg in it. There were displays, there were handouts, there were flyers, there was just, it was everywhere in Columbus. And that is just such a testament to the dedication this team has behind it. Now, I want to show off a couple of things in particular first. These were things that were uh, either things I picked up from friends or in, in one case, one was actually a gift. I have talked to you guys about walnuts in the past. I've got my Donkey Kong barrel. I got the G.I. Joe display for my collector's editions of my G.I. Joes. And Corey's just an unbelievable guy and the whole team behind walnuts are just so incredibly talented and just do amazing, amazing artwork. And last time I saw him when I was at Korg, I bought the G.I. Joe display on the gray aged wood and he gave me a Cobra one to put along with my Cobra figures. And just thank you so much. I. I can't tell you guys enough how much I enjoy the artwork that they do, and I'm actually going to be commissioning a Square Pegs logo to be done to hang up on the wall because it's just, it's one of my favorite things. Like, every big, every convention I go to where they're at, I pick something up because of how great their work is. And having this just as a gift is ridiculous, and I appreciate it, and thank you so much. It's, it's amazing. Next up, my friend Brett Weiss was there, and Brett is a video game historian, and he's an unbelievable author who writes amazing books. I've had the first volume of the NES Omnibus for a couple of years now. I actually supported the Kickstarter. I wasn't able to support volume two, though. just didn't have the opportunity at the time. Financially, wasn't able to, but seeing him at this show, picked it up here, got this one, so this is going to be on the shelf. I've already gone through this a couple of times, just reading the different anecdotes and the different write-ups that Brett has for the games. And the amazing thing about these is it's not just Brett's point of view. Brett actually interviews a lot of different people and gets their thoughts on particular games and makes sure that they're included in here. And it's it's kind of remarkable because there's not just like a universal one-size-fits-all opinion on games, obviously. There's going to be different opinions. And there's some incredible ones in here where there are games that I've hated but people are writing about and just have these glowing reviews of. It makes me kind of want to go back and try them over again just to see if I'm not looking at them in the right light. Uh, it, it was it was just really awesome to get this. And now I'm moving on to the SNES Omnibus. Uh, so, Brett, next time I see you, make sure you have some of those because I'll be picking those up too. Next, my friend, the immortal John Hancock, was there. John is uh, one of my closest friends. He's someone that um, has really gone beyond just YouTube friend at this point. Uh, kind of like Chris, like John Riggs, like, uh, like Thor, like Gary. 
these are people that aren't just friends on YouTube. These are people that are, are near and dear to me and people that I, you know, I go out of my way to to talk to every day because they are just, they're friends. They're people that I'm close to and people that I love. And I want to support John whenever he does something. And John was selling his game, Block'em Sock'em. It's a new Sega Genesis game. It's a homebrew. It's really awesome. I'm going to show you some gameplay as I'm talking over this. But I was able to play, and it's a really clever puzzle game. And of course, it's my friend. So of course, I want to help him out. I, I supported John when he did his Atari 2600 game. I supported John Riggs when he did Yaya Divas 2. It's it's really cool to be able to get these amazing games that my friends are making. <laughs> like That's such a cool feeling. It's such a cool thing to say. And I'm just so stoked to be able to do that and to be able to support them in that particular way because, I mean, games are great and we should support people that are making games today, especially homebrews on classic consoles because, I mean, that's kind of alchemy, right? Like, this was something that we all dream dreamt about when we were younger. And to be able to get new games released on classic hardware, I've said it a million times on the channel in the past, I love living in the future because we get these amazing games from today on the consoles of yesterday and I just love playing them. I'm so excited that I have this. I'm so excited I was able to support John for this one because it's just a wonderful, fun puzzle game. Okay, next. Now you guys know I have a Sega Master System. I don't have a ton of games for it, but you saw how excited I was when I got Choplifter in the latest video game is monthly. And I haven't had a controller for my Master System. I changed that at this show and I didn't pick up just a normal run of the mill Sega Master System controller, no. My friend Brian was there. He does BD Retro Mods and he makes controllers and I picked up this amazing Sega Master System arcade stick. Now, just listen real quick. Do you hear those beautiful switches, those beautiful mechanical switches in there? I am so excited to have this. It's, I haven't had a chance to use it yet. Full disclosure there, but uh, everything I have read about his work and everything I have seen him do online and show the stuff that he's working on is incredible. He has a track and field controller as well that I really need to get for the Famicom because my copy of Hypersports I can't play and I need something where I'm able to just mash on those buttons to be able to play it and I'm looking forward to it. But this right here for the Master System, super stoked to have it. Love that it's in the Sega Blue. Really excited to have this one. Now, I got two more things before we get to games, but these, these are really cool. All right, so we all have those kind of signature memories of reading classic video game magazines. And this was no different for me. Nintendo Power was my favorite thing growing up. I, I looked forward to getting the new Nintendo Power every couple of months when it would come in. And there were two in particular I was looking for at this show, and I fully anticipated not finding them. But, got them both. Power Blade and Star Tropics. Now, these will be used in future videos. I'll be doing some stuff where I'm looking at the top 30, or the Counselor's Corner, or things like that in here, and kind of running through those and seeing how they perform today. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to have these. I mean, Star Tropics is one of my favorite NES games anyway, as is Power Blade. So having something that's a little bit tied into those is just an awesome feeling, and I'm happy to add these to the Nintendo Power Collection. Not a huge collection by any stretch of the imagination, not a completionist, not going for the full set. Just getting the Nintendo Powers that feature games that I loved on the cover is probably going to be the goal. And to get these two in one swoop at one booth for a damn good price made me really happy. But of course... It wasn't just other stuff I picked up. I definitely picked up some games. You know me, you know I picked up some games. We're gonna start with Famicom. I am like loving collecting for the Famicom. Like it is one of my favorite things to shop for because most of the time stuff is dirt cheap and being able to add stuff to my Famicom collection is cheaper than buying it for the NES in a lot of cases. And in some cases, it's stuff that was never released here in the States. And that's kind of the stuff I gravitate most towards. Not to say that's gonna be all I gravitate towards, but things like this. This is a Ramen Man game for the Famicom. Ramen Man is a character from Kinnikuman, uh, muscle men here in the States, M millions of unusual small creatures lurking everywhere. And this is a game where I was going through a $5 bin and I saw Ramen Man and I went, I have no idea what this game is, but if it's got Ramen Man, I'm buying it. Now, you're seeing footage, I'm, I haven't even played this yet, so I don't know what kind of game it is. I just knew that it was Ramen Man, so I had to have it. You're seeing the footage on screen right now. The only thing I know about this is from Japan Retro Direct. This says it has a very interesting fighting and battle system. And that's it. That's all I got. So we're going to find out together. It does have a very interesting fighting and battle system, but how cool is this? Just a random Ramen Man. Ramen Man's such a cool character. And being able to add this to the Famicom collection, this weird piece of Kinnikuman merchandise, that's awesome. Absolutely excited to play this one. Can't wait to check it out. Hopefully it doesn't require a lot of reading because... I don't know any Japanese. Next up, this is a classic space shooter, and this is one I used to own on the NES, and is honestly such a great game that I can't complain about being able to find this for five bucks. This is uh, this is Gradius, and Gradius is one of the best shoot 'em ups on the NES, one of the best on the Famicom. Really excited to have this. Found this in the same five dollar. That's all my other pickups that just fell on the floor. <laughs> 
Found this in the same $5 bin as I found Ramen Man and just super stoked to have this one. One final game I got in that $5 bin, it's a classic. This features one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. It's Pac-Man, man. Gotta be able to have the Pac-Man. I love Pac-Man on the NES. Always have, always will. And getting this one, I, I love the artwork. I love the label art. It's even got artwork on the top, labels peeling a little bit, but don't really care. Getting this for five bucks, great deal. All right, next up are the two games that I picked up at Warp Zone, the store I was talking about earlier. Both on the Famicom, both fantastic. First is YY World. This is kind of, it's wackadoo. It's out there, it's weird, it's crazy, but it's so unique and it's something that we absolutely did not get here in the States, so I had to pick this one up. I'm on the lookout now for YY World 2. Definitely need that one, but this was super cool to find and super cool to pick up. Okay, now I'm gonna read this off the phone because I gotta make sure I get the entire name of this game in here and I'm probably gonna butcher some of the pronunciation, but I don't really care. All right, this is Go Go Niketsu Hockey Club Slip and Slide Madness. This is a Kunio Kun ice hockey game. Had no clue this even existed. Zero idea this was a real thing. This is basically super dodgeball, but ice hockey. This is River City Ransom, but ice hockey. This is from Technos. This is going to be incredible. I actually did play this a little bit on my Anburnic and wanted just wanted to try it out. So curious about this. And it's it's magnificent. It's so much fun. It's so good. It looks great. This is just such a weird game. And it was actually slated to come out in the States and it never did. And I wish we had gotten a release for it, but so excited to have this one. This is an amazing Famicom game to add to the collection. So stoked. All right, these next four I actually found at Half Price Books. Uh, I stopped at Half Price Books, found these four as well. These were all a great price uh, and not super hard to find stuff, but just things that I wanted to add to the collection. One thing I'm working towards completing the entire series, having every single game in the collection, but not going to really show any gameplay footage of these. One, because two of them are on the PS3 and my PS3 isn't doing a pass through right now. Uh, and one just because it's Ratchet and Clank. Well, I guess, okay, we'll go there first. Uh, it's a Ratchet and Clank game on the PS2. So uh, this is Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal. Uh, I actually thought I didn't have this one, but I do have the greatest hits, but now I have the original release as well. So there we go. This is Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus. Uh, I'll show some footage from a, from a trailer that released for this, but like I said, the PS3 isn't doing a pass through right now, but excited to have this one. And finally, this is Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal Assault. Now. That puts me at like three Ratchet and Clank games that I'm missing in total, so I'm going to be tracking those down over the next year because I would love to have the entire series in just one fell swoop, have the entire collection in hand, because it's just, it's my favorite PlayStation series. It's my favorite Sony related series, and I, I'd love to own them all. And this is one that I had to replace. I traded this in sometime last year and don't really know why, because it's an awesome game and kind of wish I had hung on to it, and I've wanted to play it a bunch of times since then, so. That facilitated me picking it up, and that is ExciteBots on the Wii. I got this for like three bucks. Um, it's it's worth so much more than that, it, and it's really not like monetarily, it's not worth more than that. But gameplay, like fun-wise, absolutely worth more than that because it's just it's a blast of a game. It's so much fun to play. It's such a unique type of racing game that you don't really see anywhere like that, and it's. It's just great. It's a it's a signature we titled me. It's it's a wonderful game to add to a collection just because it does something different than most racing games, and I think it's worth having and worth playing. The last two, and these are the big ones. Uh, and one of them I'm going to show right now, and you're probably going to say, "How is that not the big one?" Uh, because the other one, sentimentally, is more important to me. But this is Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars. If you have not played this, I really think you need to. I know it's not for everybody. A lot of people don't like RPGs and that's fine. You don't have to like RPGs. I If if you do like RPGs though and you have not played this, it's worth playing. So this is a Mario game built by Square and it's fantastic. It's absolutely hilarious. The graphics are wonderful. The gameplay is super solid. If you like the original Paper Mario game, this is the spiritual descendant of it. This is its spiritual ancestor. This is where it all started. You need to check this one out. I am so happy I found this at a reasonable price. I'm so happy I picked this one up. And it is like pristine, just like immaculate condition. Really, really excited. So happy to have this because it's just such a wonderful game. The one game I went to the convention for, after I've already shown you like 10 other games, uh, the one game I went to the convention for that I was looking for was a particular copy of an NES game complete in box because it was a game that I never owned when I was younger. It was something I rented all the time and I always wanted to own it and I never did. I've had the opportunity to buy the cart a few times, but I never pulled the trigger on it because I wanted the complete in box experience and I was hoping I was gonna discover it at the show. And I went to a bunch of different booths and there was one that had it for about 30 bucks uh, and it wasn't in great condition. 
It was a little beat up. Uh, cart was a little dirty. Didn't have the dust sleeve, so it wasn't really complete. It was mostly complete, but wasn't willing to pay 30 bucks for something like that. If I was gonna buy it, I wanted it to be in good shape. And uh, I managed to find at another booth, the Battle of Olympus, complete in box, in spectacular condition. So why the Battle of Olympus? I, when I was younger, I was completely Greek mythology obsessed. It was one of my favorite things to read about, one of my like favorite subjects, one of my favorite things to learn about and study about because it was interesting. It was kind of like precursor superheroes, really. You know, it was like, these are people doing these fantastical feats and just these amazing things. And I wanted to learn more about it. And when a video game came out featuring Greek mythology, I was all over it. It played like Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, which I loved. It looked great. The music was fun. And being able to go throughout ancient Greece and go to all these different levels and explore and play and just it meant the world to me as a kid, and it's something as an adult that I love to this day. And being able to track this down, and I said in a post on their Facebook page, what is the one thing you're looking for at Torque? I said, Battle of Olympus, complete in box. Mission accomplished. There you have it, Torque recap. If you are anywhere near Columbus, Ohio, you owe it to yourself to explore the area, find all the retro game stores that are in the area and make sure you visit them. And if you have the opportunity to attend either of the amazing conventions in Columbus, either Korg or Torg, do it because you won't be disappointed. Folks, I'm telling you straight up, Columbus is on the retro gaming map. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.